uh, again, right here we got our, our notes. Make sure you, you have at least the, the map portion so we can understand what's taking place, especially uh, as we narrow in on where the battles will take place. And, uh, not here we had to have younger children rated our arms last week, right? <laughs> but uh, there was something atrocious that happened. And so that story carries over into chapter 20, verse 1. And every single person is gathering, right? All the sons of Israel. Remember, there's, there's 12 tribes, right? Okay, so uh, we, we've got, uh, I used this example before, right? Dell, we have three kids, right? They all have kids. They're going to all have kids, right? They're all cousins. Well, there was one guy named Jacob, not our Jacob, okay? This is thousands of years ago. Uh, he had uh, 12, 12 kids, and that become what is now known as Israel, right? And so they all are cousins, and they are told by God to take the whole, the whole land, some of them obey and some of them do not. Okay, and so we, we now are about to have a civil war because of an incident that occurred of violence around this area. There's uh, Gebeah, it's right in there. Okay, and here's the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, they're all gathering right there, Mizpah, right? That's where this whole area is taking place. Look at verse 1, chapter 20. The sons of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, including the land of, of Gilead, they came out, they assembled as one man to the Lord at Mizpah. Excuse me. If we look at verse 1, okay, this is very, very sad, all right? Very, very sad. This is the only time that there's unity in the book of Judges. That's sad, isn't it? Very sad. And there's not unity, right? Benjamin's not there. But this is one of the few times, if at all, that there is unity. And why is there unity? Because of some atrocious act that has occurred. Okay? Because of some disgusting, for some reason, he decided to chop off his wife and send her out. That's the only reason we have unity. Because of this senseless violence, that's why we have unity. And I thought, oh man, that would never happen here. Do you guys remember 9 11? <laughs> We're in September, right? It's been over 20 years ago. Man, we, we, got, we got, you know, destroyed, right? 3,000 people. Airplanes crashed in the Twin Towers. And America was unified for one moment, right? For uh, maybe six months. I have no idea what it would take now to unify us. But that's what happened. If we go back throughout, if we go back throughout the book of Judges, chapter 4, Deborah and Barak, Barak didn't even want to go fight. Like, hey, you know, if you go, I guess I'll go. But, like, not really. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Uh, how about Gideon, right? I just sent someone else. And then we, we whittle everything down to 300 men. And, of course, Samson. Samson, remember, we studied this. Here's the strongest guy ever, right? He makes the Hulk look small, right? Here's this guy who's totally ripped and strong. Samson, you know, Israel didn't even really want to judge. They didn't even cry out because of their sin. The Lord brought them Samson. And so this is one of the few times, if at all, verse 1, they were assembled as one man. There's unity. It's hard to have unity, isn't it? And that's sad because Paul tells us as the church, we're to be unified, right? We're to forgive each other, okay? And so that's something to just keep in mind here. Let's look at verse 2. That unity is precious. Verse 2, the chiefs of all the people, all the tribes of Israel, they took their stand in the assembly, 400,000 foot soldiers who drew the sword. How many people? 400,000. And you'll notice the phrase, who drew the sword. I just want to just make a mental note here. Put an asterisk. Andrew would not have been here. Okay? You know why? Because David has to tell me how to even load the weapons sometimes, right? He doesn't kind of build his own weapon. All this stuff is like, you know what, Andrew? You should probably load it like this and then open your eyes as you fire the gun. That will help you with accuracy issues, right? So these guys, verse 2, there's a lot of them, and they know how to fight. Are we clear? They know how to use their sword. And notice, notice 400,000, guys. 400,000 all through this area. They're gathered right here at Nisba, right there. I need new batteries. Okay. <laughs> We've got technical issues. There's 400,000 of them. The reason that's important, this is the most we've seen in all the book of Judges. We had 10,000 men with Barak and Deborah taking on these chariots. We had Gideon. The Lord intentionally whittled it down to how many? 300. Okay. And then Samson, when he died, he killed more when he died. The day he, he died, he killed 3,000 Philistines. This is astronomical amount of people for the book of Judges, right? There's a lot of people, a lot of people. Verse 3, they're going to be asking 
in verse 3, tell us what happened, right? How did this wicked place, right? What's the story, right? Let's get this, let's get this courtroom drama going here, right? Now notice in verse 3, I love this. They put parentheses. This never happens in Glendale. <clears throat> never, ever, right? The sons of Benjamin heard that the sons of Israel got together. You guys ever have a barbecue in Glendale and you don't invite some of your family? Wink, wink. No, that would never happen. Nobody would ever post pictures of something that we weren't invited to about the family barbecue. I'm not better. Just let it go, right? Let it go, let it go. Some of you parents in Frozen, right? Just let it go. They heard about it. They heard something's going on. They probably saw there were 400,000 guys. What's going on? How come we're not invited to this picnic, right? And so here, the sons of Israel, look at verse 3. Tell us how this wickedness takes place. Verse 4 is crucial, guys. Verse 4 is crucial because we have the Levite is going to tell his story. You guys know I like the radio guy, Paul Harvey. Now you know the rest of the story. We're about to hear his version of the story. Are you guys with me? Not the rest of the story. Paul Harvey, we're going to hear the Levite's version of the story. And so he stands up in verse 4. The husband of the woman who's murdered. He says, I came with my concubine to spend the night at Gebeah, which belongs to Benjamin. Guys, this is a crucial verse. Okay, verse 4 is a crucial verse. Why is it crucial? Because we have unity, and the entire book is about not listening to the Word of God. Are you with me? The whole book is about not listening to the Word of God. I know what we'll do. Let's listen to this Levite who literally has a tainted ministry. We went all about last week. We, we looked at that. But it says here in the verse, verse 4, the husband of the woman who is his concubine. Lendo Baptist Church, those are not compatible. This is an Old Testament priest who literally would be working at the equivalent of a church, who is now in his own testimony talking about the sin in his life. You guys would mean it's like me, like, hey, you know, the affair I was having with Tanya, I want you to all listen to the word of God this morning. Some of you would be like, what the heck is going on? Right? What is going on? And that's how far the people have, have, have gone into sin. It, it's like it doesn't even phase them. It doesn't even phase them. It's, it, it, guys, the irony here, every single thing is happening because there hasn't been unity. And then, of course, they have not listened to the word of God. And I, again, write this down, okay? Judges chapter 1, verse 19. All of this is occurring because they didn't obey the word of God. They did not obey the word of God and clear out the area that he told them to clear out. Literally, this is all occurring because of disobedience. And so I want to pause right here. If you've heard the word of God, if you've heard the Spirit speaking to you, and you are choosing not to obey it, look at the, look at the potential sin generations down the line. Let that sink in your heart, because this scares me as a dad. This scares me as a dad. That Corbin and Hope are watching, and then maybe whatever sin is in my life, or Tanya and I, you know, as a couple, that that can be passed down to their kids and their kids. Let this sink in your heart. If you know God's speaking to you about something, about some kind of sin, and you're choosing to ignore it, look what happens, disobedience. Look at this, guys. They're going to now listen to the tainted testimony of a tainted ministry worker. And it doesn't even phase him. It doesn't even phase him. This is scary. This is absolutely scary. I'm begging you. If you hear the Spirit speaking to you, you need to act right now. Remember, we haven't said it in a while, but let's say it again. Nothing changes. Don't go home the same, guys. If the Spirit is speaking to you today, listen to the Word of God. Obey the Word of God. Just look what happens. Verse, verse 4. Now, Jacob, I know we're going to love this because we have, we, we joke, right, stay on the line, right? Our men, like, what does the Bible say? What does that verse say? We're going to see the Levite twist his own testimony, okay? Verse 4, he did go to Gebeah. Verse 5 is where it gets interesting. Let's look, shall we? Verse 5. The men of Gibeah rose up against me. They surrounded the house at night because of me. They intended to kill me. Instead, they ravished my concubine, so she died. Hmm. A good prosecution lawyer would have a field day with that. Okay, now again, we know we have younger viewers here. So we won't go back into chapter 19. But let's just say you could peruse your own Bible, chapter 19, verse 20. Okay, and you can see that that is not what actually happened. They did not. Let's look at verse 5. 
Did the entire town of Gebeah rise up against him? No. A couple of guys. Okay, the word, the word worthless fellows in Hebrew, it's, it's maybe five or seven. I mean, it's not more than ten. Okay? So the entire town did not go against you, Sir Levi. They did surround the house because they intended to kill me. Is that what happened? That is not what happened. In fact, they wanted some deviant behavior, but, but killing him was not on the table at that moment. And you'll notice they ravished my concubine. That, that did occur. But he's missing a crucial portion of the tale. I love, I love the visual aid now. You, you threw her out the door. You threw her out the door. <coughs> You're part of the problem. I mean, this is, I mean, I wish I was an attorney, but this guy, man, the prosecutor would have a field day. His testimony is tainted. Are you guys with me? Did those things happen? Yes. As my Pinocchio knows, got longer. Okay? This, I mean, technically happened, but is it telling the truth? No. We are not telling the truth here. Okay? They did not <laughs> do half those things. You threw her out of the door. Verse 6. So I took hold of my concubine, cut her in pieces, and sent her throughout the land of Israel. For they have committed a lewd and disgraceful act. Okay? You can see on the screen there the idea of, of, of that abomination, right? Some of you have that translation, that Hebrew. This is the lowest of low kind of sin. Okay? They committed this. That is absolutely true. But again, it's a couple of guys. Okay? It's not necessarily the whole tribe. And it has been senseless violence. And, and I, I just, man, we have to be so clear here right now, guys. I think we've all done stuff like this, okay? Where something happened to us, and we twisted things to get it, make us kind of seem like probably a little bit better than we are. I mean, if we're honest, and guys, one of the things about living in Douglas County is we love hunting and fishing. And we've all heard the fisherman's story. Man, I caught one this big. And then I'm looking at all y'all Facebook photos, and it's this big. Okay, you'd have to really magnify that photo to be able to get that, 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 that large. I remember uh, when I was dating Tanya, one of the first dates, her brother, to intimidate me, sent me a photo of him with a bow and arrow, and he was killing some kind of animal. And obviously, I was not phased because I had nothing to hide. Actually, I was scared to death because the fact that he could use a bow scared me. I was like, oh my goodness, this guy knows what he's doing, right? He could actually hit me. But then when you enlarge the photo, and he did not have an iPhone, that was my first warning sign right there. I knew I couldn't marry this family. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> I, he had an Android. But I zoom in on it, it's like, you know, actually, that's a baby elk right there. <laughs> like, you're not that tough, right? Guys, we've all enhanced our stories. We've all enhanced things where... Maybe we've twisted or changed some of the sin in our lives. It's really not that bad. Right? Maybe some kind of small white lie and it turns into something else. How many times, right, we were looking innocently on the internet. And next thing you know, we're into, we're into sites that we shouldn't be on. How many times we, I was going to do this. And next thing you know, sin came into our lives. And we try to rationalize it, guys. It happens all the, all the time. We have to ask, are we rationalizing anything right now in our lives? Because look what happens. Look what happens. There's about to be a civil war. Yes, there's some violence. But there's also lying on this side. There's also cowardice on this side. Okay? We have to ask, is there things we're rationalizing in our lives right now? Verse 7. Verse 7. Behold, all of you in sons of Israel, give your advice. Okay? As you can see, uh, if, we can, if we can move to the next slide here, all the people arose as one man. Um, you see that they're all going to gather together, okay? And they're going to begin to break up how they're going to fight. And that's what that map is. I put it on your notes, okay? It's absolutely important that we realize they're going to set up a supply line. And what they're doing is they're having a big discussion here. And since we all love Westerns, this is what they're doing. Let's get a posse together and go after them. Let's do it. Let's go after them. And this is what we're going to do. Nobody's going home until we take care of this. <coughs> Verse 9. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go up by lots. I want to be very, very clear here. Verse 9 is in your notes. Okay, right here, guys. This is something that Christians, I have encountered this. I have people, maybe not Christians, but they have rationalized that the Bible allows gambling. No, the Lord does not want you to gamble. The Lord wants you to be wise with your money. 
Uh, but this is not what's occurring. <coughs> the idea of casting lots, guys, is a way to discern God's will after some kind of counsel, after discussing with some kind of priest or, or whatnot in the Old Testament. We see it in Jonah. We see it in Daniel. It is, in fact, a different kind of mindset than what Jacob sees at the casino. Right? We go to have a good time. I'm going to put 20 down and try to get 1,000 back. That's not occurring here. What's occurring is, Lord, we've discussed this issue. We know it's sin. We need to know what's going on. Okay? There's a different mindset. You're not trying to, to take advantage. You're trying to discern God's will. In fact, the book of Acts, after Judas, right? Judas the apostle, he kills himself. They need a 12th apostle. What do they do? They pray. They discuss it. They cast lots. They say, Lord, we're not trying to get thousands of dollars and win the lotto here. We're trying to dis decipher what you have for us. And the Lord, Old Testament, New Testament, many times uses this as a way to reveal his will. Now, am I saying publicly, I want you all to go home, buy some dice, and let's do this. Okay, no, I'm not saying that. Okay, I want to be clear. But it is a biblical practice in the right context, in the right mindset that the Lord uses Especially in the book of Jonah, okay? That's how they know he was the coward on the, on the ship, right? The lot cast to Jonah. But verse 10, so they're going to go by the lot, and what are we going to do? We're going to take 10 men out of 100. We're going to get those tribes, and out of 100, we're going to do 1,000. Out of 1,000, 10,000. And they're going to get a supply line. As you see on the map, we're going to get this going so that we can attack in any direction. We'll have food and supplies for our men as we attack the tribe of Benjamin. So, excuse me, that's what's occurring here. Verse 11, and so they gather, they're, they're united, and what happens? Well, the tribes of Israel, they, they go to Benjamin. We're giving you a chance, guys. We're giving you a chance. What's this wickedness in verse 12 that's taking place? Deliver the men to us so that we can, we can punish them. I mean, amen, right? We're not going to wipe everybody out. Let's, let's, they need to face the, 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 the appropriate justice. Okay, they give them an opportunity, verse 13, that we will put them to death and remove this wickedness from Israel. The sons of Benjamin, they did not listen to the voice of their brothers. Oh man, I even, I even put this on your notes here in verse 12 and 13. Turn these worthless guys over. Guys, they're not like, they're not keeping awesome scholars. They're not keeping really nice guys. No, this is the, as you see in the Hebrew, man, this is horrible, horrible guys. Right? It's horrible, sinful. You shouldn't want this in your society. Right? We need to punish this evil. Verse 13, but the sons of Benjamin would not listen. Why wouldn't they listen? Man, why wouldn't they listen? I, I mean, guys, why would you protect this kind of violence in your, in your house? You wouldn't, right? You're turning them into the police. Why would you do that? Well, it's a, a very old adage, a very famous phrase. I've seen how powerful it is in Glendale. I mean, especially these small towns, because everybody has close, close kin, right? Close family. The Johnson clan is throughout this area. It's one simple reason why they wouldn't turn them in. Are we ready? It's worth 1995 for this, this morning. Blood is thicker than water. Yeah. Bruce already got it. Like, man, I felt that. Right? How many of us have had a relative? You're like, man, I should not be loaning them money again. I should not be helping them out again. Man, just they need to be thrown in prison for a while, right? Like, I don't like this because blood is thicker than water. And so you're going to back your ben your fellow cousins, right? Your fellow family and Benjamin. That's what they're going to do. And I mean, guys, we see this a lot. We see this a lot. I know, Del, I truly know that you mean you're always welcome. Many of you have offered that same thing to, to me. You're always welcome. Just give us a heads up. But I think we all, if we're, if we're true, we know that that means Tanya can't you come over. If you stay at home, that's fine. Right? Like, you can always welcome because blood is thicker than water, right? You can always come in there. Or how about uh, if we look at verse 13, guys, we, not only do we do this with our families, let's be honest. We're coming up on my, my favorite, just kidding, worst time of the year. We're about a year away from an election. I hate it. I hate it. I hate ministry during it because it's like we always get into the political track. And let's be honest, we're loyal to those, aren't we? Sometimes we're more loyal to that than to the Lord. I know people that are so focused on certain issues that it becomes idolatry, right? Blood's thicker than water. 
Blood's thicker than the word of God. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That idol is more important than the word of God. This is a problem. We support stuff, hobbies, causes. We support people, political figures. Deep in our heart, we know. I probably shouldn't be doing that. Even when the violence is obvious, right, in this context. We do it all the time. Tim Keller, I put his quote on the back of your notes there. When we put blood... Racial ties, community, political figures, political agenda, above the common biblical moral good, you have created an idol, and it needs to be thrown down, because thou shalt have no other gods before me. So again, I ask your heart, what are you being loyal to? What are you being loyal to? Because if it's not the Lord, that means it's an idol. There's an idol in your life, and it's got to be thrown down. Look at the sin that occurs Guys, the sons of Benjamin, they gather. Verse 14, the cities, they, they go out to battle Israel. What we have here is a literal civil war on both sides because they did not listen to the word of God. That never happens in churches. Oops. <laughs> I believe there are church splits all the time. Hmm, I wonder what happens, right? Because of sin, right? We didn't listen to the word of God. How about in our own lives, right? How many marriages could have been saved if they just listened to the word of God? happens all the time. Both churches, individuals, and we have a civil war in Israel literally because of not listening, because of sin, and now all hands on deck, right? Look at verse 15. The sons of Benjamin, they had 26,000 men who drew the sword, and besides the inhabitants of Gibeah, they had 700 choice men, meaning they had really good guys, right? They were really good fighters. Specifically, verse 16, they were left-handed. Excuse me, they were left-handed, and they could sling a stone. The reason the left-handed is mentioned, is anybody left-handed? Raise hands. Come on, guys. I love this pun. Where's Randy? Right. Lefties, have, lefties have rights, too, you know. Okay, that's a good joke. So we got a couple of us out there. Boo. All right? Now, one of the benefits of sports for left-handed people is that we do things the opposite. And I'm left-handed, so I play basketball. I always was able to get a millisecond to shoot because everybody guards you a little different. Because they're used to the right-handed guy. And so it's a little bit of an advantage. Specifically, here, look at verse 16. This is a major advantage because they are slingshots, right? They throw it at a hair and they don't miss. These guys are crack shots, as you guys know. I'm really great with my block, right? Once David told me to open my eyes, so I at least can sort of hit the target, right? But these guys are legit, right? They're not amateurs. They are very, very good and... Look at verse 15 one more time. 26,000 men. That's more than Barak and Deborah. That's more than Gideon. That's more than Samson. So they've got an actual legitimate army. And yet, I'm no expert. But I did take a math class. And I got a B and a B plus. And so I'd like to tell you again, 1995, did you guys know that 400,000, I think Jason is somebody who teaches math, you can confirm that's greater than 26,000, correct? Woo! All right. In fact, it's like 10 times more, right? It's an astronomical number. So, Benjamin, I hate to be your military counsel, but if they just literally storm the castle, there's nothing you can do. You're going to get wiped out. Are you guys with me? But yet, they do not win. Because why? There's still sin in their midst. They still have not sought the Lord. Neither side. And so we're going to see next week, they're going to end up having to fight three separate times to try to get victory. Why? Because there's still sin in their midst. And again, guys, as we close, all this disobedience, all this not listening to the Lord, it's now leading to a civil war. You know, as we close, you can see, can we flip to the last one? We talk about the invitation, guys. We don't want you to go home and sing. But look at that, that PCG, that acronym, right? That personal, right? The sin in our lives is personal. It does impact me, right? You as an individual, it impacts your family. And then it, it, it permeates. It goes to the culture, right? Look at Glendale, right? You think one divorce is like separate from another? No, they all impact each other. The drug use, right? It all impacts everybody. And then we see now the generation. Because they didn't listen, we have people in generation, kids having kids, that are now going to go to civil war. Why? Because they didn't obey the word. Glendale Baptist Church, I'm begging you, listen to the word of God. If there's sin in your life right now, man, listen to the word. Come forward. Get, get prayer. Get the help you need right now because we don't want you to go on the same. One more time. I don't want to ever overuse it, but at the same time, it needs to prick our heart, right? Nothing changes. Nothing changes. 
We don't want you to go home. And if you're, man, I, I need prayer for, for the idols in my life. Right? I need the prayer for, because I've been rationalizing. I've been rationalizing sin. Man, we never do that, right? I believe Adam and Eve are exhibit A, right? That's the woman you gave me. That's the snake. And the poor snake, you didn't have a, a leg to stand on, man. Don't, don't, all right, sorry. I'll, I'll get rid of that one. But we rationalize all the time. We rationalize all the time. Father, 